another tutorial on the CS series and in this video we're going to complete the part of the form that we started in tutorial number 10 and I so far made a few changes to the form like removing the autofocus in these other fields apart from the first name because I want um, the first name to autofocus when the form is loaded for the first time but not other forms not other fields okay and then um and then this is the full uh the, the form that i so far made uh, i have the first name middle name last name username email email no that's that's a mistake let me correct that immediately okay so here we're going to correct our email field and just the the form level let's change it to form and then there you go good so we have all this field that we want to insert into our database but um i have to um mention something about bootstrap so far we we had mentioned something about uh, form control which takes uh the full length of of the form okay so the form control that is the form control class of bootstrap it takes the control of the form the next thing that I'm going to talk about is um, the bootstrap grid uh, style okay in bootstrap it implements the 12 uh, column layout pattern so that um, the user registration form here has 12 columns a one two three four up to 12 okay so that we can divide we can divide this form into 12 equal parts and this comes handy when you have when you have um users uh, accessing your application from different devices say uh, a phone a tablet uh, a laptop and it's a, a bigger screen say like a docking station here that i'm currently using in the laptop so but you want your application to render uh, nicely on the on, on on the gadgets on the devices okay so that um when uh when you you're using a 13 inch laptop uh, you can specify that you want to two columns you want the form to uh display in two columns okay but when you're using uh mobile phones you want your form to display on a single column so that uh, the fields become a little bit uh, visible and the rest of the things and on extra large screens like those 24 inches or 70 something inches if they, if they exist that is uh, you want your you want your users to uh, see more fields so you're going to create more columns so let's implement that by just introducing the boots uh, grid system here like on the top here we have column d12 which mean uh, which means that we are in bootstrap to div to just use the full width of, of the bootstrap class uh pay the the bootstrap grid, grid uh, system okay so we're going to create a new we're going to create a new grid system here and uh we're going to separate our form into two into two columns here the first one to the uh, the, the uh, to the left and to the right and we're going to, uh, to divide our our input field so that uh, we have the first name middle name last name uh -huh, on the first column and the rest on the on the second column so um i'm going to echo here i'm going to echo a div that's um, i want to divide to divide the the form okay so i'm going to equal div um and then i'm going to do the class okay class is equal is equal to call that's the column okay call on medium devices md on medium devices on de devices with medium screens not the, those kind of big screens or phones on me medium devices that is called md6 uh how -huh. we're going to separate the form into two parts okay so this 
works as well for extra extra larger screens okay like uh like those huge docking stations it will still render in two columns so i'll stop the div right here that is uh, after that is after my last name so that we separate the username and the, and the rest of the field so come here and then separate it right here so i'm going to echo i'm going to echo a, a close, closing div tag okay closing div, div tag excellent excellent to okay let's close this one right here as well what's not going on here what's not going on here okay i need this one over here and then you can just do away with this one here good so that's that so i'm going to repeat this to echo another another div with call md6 under this one here and then stop it right here okay so that if line 91 user registration line number 91 oh damn i copied my own stuff let me come back and copy this he copied the upper the upper okay so we come here and paste It's already working anyway so um i currently have two columns but as i explained earlier uh, i'm dividing i'm dividing the form into two parts on medium on medium screens like the current laptop that i'm using it will render into in two columns so that you have something to do with this that on medium screens uh we're going to maintain two two columns but when our form starts getting smaller and smaller devices, you're going to have just one form. So anything up from the up from the medium screen, our form is going to show on two co two columns, okay? And then we have other bootstrap uh, grid gridding systems like the uh, we have call MD, call uh, SM. That that's the small medium lg large and then the extra large so you have to go ahead and find out for you for, for yourself what the the grading system really means but at least i've tried to let you know the lesser bit of it okay so we have we have this one here so far so i'm going to activate the the submit button not working yet still okay i know you tried this in the in the previous video but it's not yet activated so i'm going to just echo this in the in the browser echo form open and then echo form close so come in here down here and then echo form close so that our browser knows that is form without echoing our browser won't know so click on this and then everything here is not found so let's go ahead and create this uh this function in our controller to handle to handle this uh, uh the submit action of this form so i just come back here to to my controller that's the hr controller which is going to handle uh the form so i'm going to create this function in here the function that uh our, our form submits so that's the hr as you can see from our user registration mentioned something about uh, submitting our our form to the hr controller that's uh that's the parameters that we provided under the form of op open parentheses okay so 
I want you guys to switch to our HR controller and then do the uh, this function, the new user function, okay? And it's going to handle our handle the form uh, to handle the inserting insertion of the form into the database. Okay, so let's do function new user, and then we're just going to we're just going to create an array to contain all the form inputs. So data is equal to array. Let's go ahead and provide our key and value. But here we're going to we're going to mount the database variable here for the database column, the database column, the DB variable, and then this other side we're going to pull in uh, the key uh, the key uh, the, the value to the key here is going to be the value from the form. Okay, so the database value and then the value from the form. So, um, for example, here we have we have the F name, the first name. So the first name is in the form, and in our database, uh -huh. if, you, if you run this com command here, you can get to see can get to see the the variables that you already created. Show tables users. Okay, uh, we have the F name as a variable character, and the rest of the things. Oh, let me just come into the users table and then uh, send to SQL editor create table statement. So we have the first name here as so our field that you want to insert the, the first name to. So let's just go ahead and map these variables. So F name from our controller here. So F name comes in here. Let me copy it, copy paste F name. And then the value from our form. So um, the, we, in our form, we are also using the f name variables to make our work a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and grab that field when somebody clicks on the the submit button. Okay. So I'll say uh, f name and the key, uh, the value for 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 the for, for f name is this input post and then first name so the, also first name okay so that will get the the value of that so let's go ahead and populate the multiple times about four five six times or so and mount the rest of the variables so we have here middle name so we have here <coughs> middle name middle name from in the database middle name in the form then um, last name I have last name here I have last name here and then last name database and form as well next field is our username so username here we have username and username on the form oh. Let me just confirm my database username, password. Okay, so the password field, we said we're going to pass it over bcrypt as part of our encryption, okay? So um, let's just uh, go ahead and set our employee number. And for the time being, we want to maintain our employee number here. We want to assign our employee number to our username so that we just have standard employee number and username for the time being that is and then email input post of email okay what else are we missing here from our form okay phone let's do the phone as well so phone one is the database variable oops, oops let me just go back in. it's the database variable and from our form, form as well we have it as an no as a form okay so that is that so we're done capturing our database variables 
nice so um the next thing that we're going to do is just to call the to create a model okay a model that's going to handle the insertion of of this data so let's go ahead and create our hr model uh, just open the main model here and then make, make a copy so alternate f a save us let's give it a name of um hr underscore model okay good so hr model let's change the name here to capital h I already explained this guys hr underscore model okay it's nice and i can just clear everything that i have here all the functions let me just leave it at this i just need to do uh, an extra function to handle this so i'm going to load my hr model so that i don't just keep on typing it all over like a maniac okay let's need to reload it here so let me let, let me do hr underscore model good that will work out so um i want to insert to insert uh, to insert this to the database you have to call our model that's going to handle the insertion so we can say uh we can call our model here this hr model okay and then the function that is going to insert the function that's going to insert the data let's say uh new user all the same cancel work new user and then we're going to pass in our data in here this okay super so let's go into our let's go into our model and write the function somewhere over here so let's have function new user and then we pass in our data here no, we, we are not actually passing our data. Let's say we receive our data, but it's still passing. Okay, so that is it. So simple. So let, let's go ahead and insert this to the database. So we're going to say this db insert and then the database name. Uh, sorry, the table name and we're targeting our users table. So here users, okay? So insert users Then we're going to flash in our data Okay Simple well really simple Okay, so um everything is set and we can just go ahead and fill in the details here i'm going to skip my middle name and then i want to give myself a user a username of i maintain this always my email address mm, okay so i'm going to start uh, to start spamming my my email account but let me say john doe i like john doe it's just one kind of bastard whose, whose name get, get, gets misused all over the internet okay john doe john doe just an example classical example of a bastard okay john doe john doe okay so let me go ahead and say me at vinotiano.com okay money studio guys that's just one of my many one of my several email ad addresses with my phone plus two five four seven two three three two eight nine and i'm going to leave some extra characters in here so that you guys don't call me well Okay, so that that's it. Let me try to submit this. 
Ok? Quero que você me diga isso. Good. So we have um, the field password that doesn't have a def default value. So that's the first problem in here. Because we really need to hash our to hash our our password field. But anyway, everything here is going to insert. Let's go back and provide at least something for for our hashing. Okay. Um, no, let me just provide a value and then in our next lesson, we're going to see how to uh, encrypt, to, how to encrypt our, how to encrypt our password, okay? So, let me just say in here that uh, our password field, let me grab it from the database, password, okay? And then let me just assign it as the username. People like username and password coming close, closely, closer to each other. I don't know why. So let me do password. And then let me just set it to some text somewhere. Password. We have K3. Remember it, guys? It, okay. So let's insert this one over here. But um, you guys will notice that when our when our our function uh, submits to the mod, uh, if our our function here new user uh, pass in the data to our to our model here, and then the records indeed gets inserted, we won't know, we'll just end up with a, with a page, with a blank page somewhere. So we can just uh, redirect this to our home page. That is if the insert is, is successful. So can we implement that first? So we're going to do away with this one and then we're going to encapsulate this with an Okay, we're going to encapsulate this with a parenthesis and then do if, okay, if this, if insert is indeed successful, then we're going to return true, okay? Else, we want our controller to know. Our controller must just know that this action indeed completed with this, uh, with the, uh, or it failed, okay? So else, that is if, if there's an error somewhere, okay? So else, we're going to return, return false. Good. So that will, that alone will let our controller know that uh, the process completed successfully, okay? Or failed for that matter. So let's go back to our, to our controller and then we can just uh, redirect our page. So it means we are going to do the same thing in here. If our model returns a true that if this if this HR model new user everything on if the data is indeed submitted, we're going to uh, we're going to redirect to we're going to redirect to the home page. Okay, so do I have a home page somewhere in here? Okay, I can create it as well. So, uh, if this HR model new user is successful, then let's just go ahead and load our our dashboard. Okay, dashboard. All right. So, um, I think this is a bit sensible, but if it fails this we can we can show an error message at this point or just uh, any other thing but you just need to reload the page but reloading the page is not as necessary because we have several other, other um, technologies out here to use like uh, okay we're going to talk about uh, Ajax and jQuery so that you can handle things a little bit more professionally okay but for the meantime, let me just go ahead and 
Um, no, let me just leave this. Let me just leave the else, the else bit, and tight so that you can display some some blank page somewhere. But if it it's indeed successful, we're going to load our dashboard only the dashboard, no other view. Okay. So let's go and see if this works. So we switch in here and then submit. Good. Our dashboard is loaded, which means. Um, which means if you come to our database, provide a new script and then say select star from users, you already have the have the data inserted. So it means in the next lesson, we're going to start to introduce um, bcrypt. We're going to hash our password. That is. I think it's going to be a shorter tutorial because we need to start validating our login page as up. Okay, so um, let's recap. Just as a recap, uh, we have our form here, uh, and then we submit our form to the HR controller, and then the function that's going to handle the form insertion is new user. So come to the HR controller. I'm assigning all the all the fields in my form. I'm assigning them and mapping them to the database columns. Okay. So these are the, from the form, and then these are my uh, my database va uh, variables. Then I call I call my model that's going to insert my data. But I'm wrapping it with an if statement uh -huh, to see if the action he indeed completed, the action in my model indeed completed. Okay. So in my model, I just use the CI, the code igniter way of inserting data into the database. So simple, no much code, just this db insert, table name, and then flash in the data. Okay. So after passing the data, I go ahead and wrap the same same uh, statement with an if else statement. So to check if uh, the action indeed completed or uh, there was an error inserting the data into the database. So this alone will tell my controller uh, the status uh, of the insertion. Okay, whether it inserted or failed okay so that is pretty understandable and easy to grasp i think so so that's it inserting data into the database from the form using ci code igniter so um in the next les lesson we want to hash our password shouldn't be that complicated just uh i think the next shortest video okay so why don't you meet in our next lesson to see how we can pass our 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 password field over bcrypt hashing al algorithm to introduce the first instance of security okay okay we'll be talking about security as time time goes by mm -hmm. mentioning it bit by bit several other aspects that we need to handle still so see you in the next lesson um, subscribe and come back and watch more of this see ya